this context of openness, open economies. In the Caribbean, what I think that normally translates into is that we then become consumers for major countries that are the producers. And so it ends up being a one-way type of activity. We need decision makers in the major epicenters of power to understand that going back to your earlier point, it's not just about the EU, it's not just about the United States, that when decisions are made, those decisions have a knock-on effect on those of us who are not at the table when the decision is being made, but, not, not, but, but, but nevertheless pay the price and bear the consequences of those decisions. In Africa, we have to particularly fight corruption because we are called developing countries because we lack resources, right? Um, so if those resources don't go to saving life of women, I've been working for many, many years in uh, reproductive health, um, if it doesn't go to education, you have kids who are bright but don't have a chance to, to learn. If it doesn't go to strengthening the health system, as we talked about it this morning, um, where are you going, when are we going to develop? So it's even more an emergency for Africa to make sure that public funding goes to saving life, to sending kids to school for drinkable water and so on. Um, so I think it's... Uh, it, 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 it's something we have to tackle, um, and it, it goes even beyond corruption. It's, all, it's just speaking to good governance right. um, and making sure that uh, you know, there are accountability systems. Prosperity cannot be achieved by nations by themselves, especially nations in the South. I think the Europeans have understood that a long time ago, and I think they are going in that direction. A lot of people have benefited from the integration in Europe. Look at Portugal and the change that happened. Greece, the same thing, Spain, all of those countries, countries in Eastern Europe. I think in, in, in African nations, in South American nations, Caribbean nations, I know them. I think integration and also sharing responsibilities and transforming their own kinds of spaces into spaces of creation of wealth is very important. But what we didn't see as leadership, as leadership features, I think it's really important to point out at, uh, two very key um, qualities that we came up to see as qualities of a leader and that we don't see usually in our leaders, and that is authenticity and empathy slash vulnerability. And um, again, in our simulation um, game, guess who, we, who were the leaders who had these two at the forefront? Women. And that is exactly what happens uh, in, in uh, international institutions. We do not, when you do not have women at the negotiating table, you have less chances of having comprehensive, inclusive uh, policies, policies being made. Who are you at a different panel? He didn't say I'm the former president of Nigeria. He said I'm a farmer. And when you begin to see a former president who introduces himself as a farmer, then young people can start seeing role models of who uh, a farmer can be. Thank you very much. You. But before well, the farmer <coughs> answers, <coughs> before the farmer answers, well, 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 let me just deal with that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and this is a true story. Um, a friend of mine in Canada invited me. And I got the day mixed up. So I got to Canada a day before uh, he was expecting me. And I had my ordinary passport. So when I got to Canada and uh, going through immigration, they said, look, who are you? I said, I'm a farmer from Nigeria. A farmer from Nigeria? What have you come here for? I said, I come to see a friend. A farmer from Nigeria, come all the way from Nigeria to see a friend in Canada. Okay, come this side. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, then the, 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 the questioning uh, went on. Eventually, I gave the name of my friend and um, I said, look, could I phone him? They allowed me to phone him. And he came. And uh, after about three hours, I got out of um, the immigration. Um, and then when we came out, he said, look, how did you introduce yourself? I said, I introduced myself as a farmer from Nigeria. Oh, he said, oh, you shouldn't have done that. You should have said you are in uh, agribusiness. They will have opened the door for you. <laughs> now, you know, if, if, you look, if you consider that uh, in 2050, each one of us 
you know, worldwide would have half the arable land that we have today to feed ourselves and that 60% of remaining arable land, untouched arable land, is in Africa, that Africa is only using 20% of its arable land today, <coughs> then I think it's, it's very clear to see that Africa is going to be part of the solution, not part of the problem. And it's, it's aggravating to not know what to do. But to not do what you know is tragic. And the situation that we are facing in the world of HIV around the world, not just in Africa, is a situation where we actually do know what to do. But in many cases, we're not taking the actions that we know can make a difference. You need leadership and leaders with courage because it's very hard to do this. I know firsthand how hard it is to do this. Deborah knows even better than I do how difficult it is to move this forward with all of the conflicting political agendas and competing health priorities and competing, competing national priorities. One of the reasons that we value the partnership with the OCP Policy Center so much is because there's this shared concept of a wider Atlantic. And as we said at the beginning, I think a lot of people in this room still are working on redrawing that mental map of what does the Atlantic mean and having that broader sense of what the Atlantic means, that it's not two continents, it's actually four continents that share that space. I teach at a university in Brazil, and we have 17, 19 year olds. And we found out that the youth that is coming after you has two major challenges. They have no references and no heroes. And I think these issues are very important for the youth of a country to have people that they can look at. How do you plan to become that person? I think I am already, but I don't know that. <laughs> but, so I agree with you entirely that uh, mentorship and, 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 and getting a role model is important, and that's why the emerging leaders you see here, and all of them spread out the room, we thought we could start that, we could be the generation that start changing the narrative. But we need you to be with us. We can't do it by ourselves. We have, we need you to stop thinking we are angry, we are disillusioned, we are stupid. Start considering us as part of the solution and not the problem. You need energy to move things, and this project is about moving things. It's about moving mindsets. The most difficult thing to move is mental frameworks, mindsets. Uh, and we've been doing this for four years together uh, on various, using various instruments, not surgical tools yet to get into your head, but slowly and gradually by doing Atlantic Dialogue.